Um, our second speaker uh, is Joshin Delai, uh, and I'm just making up the, the, the surnames here. I'm just <laughs> saying them as I read them phonetically. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyway, was born and raised in Vancouver and has a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology from UBC. Uh, has been involved in community-based research centre for gay men's health uh, as an investigator since 2012 and has been the totally outright coordinator uh, at Health Initiative for Men since 2013. Joshin is currently working on his applications for graduate school and he would like to obtain a master's degree in public health. So if there's anyone that can help Joshin after the... <laughs> we, should, we should talk. <laughs> We should, we should talk. <laughs> um, and please, uh, uh, please help me in welcoming Josh to the... Sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Joshin, and I work at the Community Based Research Center for Gay Men's Health, or the CBRC. And the title of my presentation is Suicide Among Gay and Bisexual Men, a Syndemic Theory Approach. And this presentation is just going over some of the results that me, uh, Olivier Travis, along with Terry and Rick from the CBRC, found in a research study that we did that's hoping to get published soon. Um, so yeah. So just to give you some background, uh, Travis did a pretty good job of going over like the history of like suicide in gay men, but I thought I'd present you just one sort of study that we looked at in our literature review before we conducting our study, um, and that gay and bisexual men are four times more likely to attempt suicide uh, during their life than straight men, and so that's quite an alarming statistic. And because it's such a high number, we were wondering like why possibly is might be this the case. Um, so one sort of theory or model that we kind of like that might be able to explain this is the theory of syndemics. So I'm just going to put up the entire definition to kind of give you like a brief rundown of it. So a syndemic theory describes how health problems tend to occur in certain populations and we kind of theorize that this might be due to the fact of things like discrimination and like health disparities and when multiple sort of epidemics occur within a population they can interact with one another and make each other worse. So in our study we were looking at uh, gay and bisexual men and with the focus on suicide and other sort of health issues and see how it could possibly relate to suicide in that sense. So most of the research on um, syndemic theory in gay men have been mostly folk, uh, focused with HIV. Um, there's only one that we could find related to suicide and that was again focused mostly on young gay and bisexual men. So our study is more looking to at adults. Um, so the way we conducted our study, we pulled from the Sex Now survey 2011, and I know most of you probably know what it is, but just in case there are people who don't know what the Sex Now survey is, it's a nationwide survey of gay and bisexual men in Canada. It's a cross-sectional study. Um, and the 2011 version was looking at social determinants of health, and they, we asked lots of different questions on such as um, sexual behavior, uh, discrimination, all those sorts of things. Um, but for our study, we were looking more at like four different types of measures. So I'll just kind of give you like a brief overview of them now. Um, so we were looking at the demographic factors in our study, and so I have them listed up there for you, such as sexual orientation, partnership status, income, age ethnicity and province and territory of residence, and you can read the rest yourself. Um, so we were looking at marginalization indicators over lifetime. So some examples of this is if someone's experienced any sort of bullying or verbal violence or physical violence because of their sexual orientation. Um, psychosocial and health issues, so um, such as um, engaging in unprotected anal sex with someone whose status wasn't known to them or might be the opposite of theirs, or um, in using party drugs and other sorts of health issues that might affect suicide. And for suicide, we looked again um, within the last 12 months. Um, there are two questions on the Sex Now survey related to suicide. So we asked if people had ever been troubled by suicide in the last 12 months or have ever, ever attempted suicide in the last 12 months. And the options are either never within the last 12 months or prior to or within the last 12 months. Um, so yeah, so it's a bit confusing. But the, we were mostly focusing on just what the last 12 months were for our study. And so our hypothesis was that um, sorry, that the accumulation of different marginalization indicators would um, 
based on sexual orientation would lead to psychosocial health issues such as suicide, and all these uh, health issues would interact with one another and, and make them worse. So I, I have this like, kind of like diagram to show you that kind of might help explain what's kind of going on. So on the left hand side, you see all the different marginalization indicators that we looked at, all the psychosocial health issues in the middle, and our idea is that these create like a snowballing effect and that we will interact with one another and make a potentially suicide worse in gain by sexual men. And the idea is that um, there would be a cumulative effect, so those um, issues that whoever experiences multiple issues will have a more likely attempt, uh, a more likely to either attempt suicide or think about suicide over the last 12 months. So this is just kind of like showing you our demographic data. Um, I'll let you have a like, look at it and soak it all in. Uh, yeah. And this is just some more of our demographic data for if you guys are interested. Cool. So I thought I'd include like, um, how those who answered the survey who were troubled by suicide, so that 17% of those who answered the survey were troubled by suicide, and 2% of those who in our survey uh, attempted suicide in the last 12 months. So those are quite big numbers, considering that we're such a small population. So this table is kind of crazy, so I'm gonna to try to break it down for you. Um, so this table shows the correlation between marginalization indicators and suicide. So um, the top half of the table is looking at those who are troubled within suicide in the last 12 months, and the bottom half are those who uh, attempted suicide in the last 12 months. So on the left, very left column, you have all the different marginalization indicators that we were looking at. Um, on the second column, you have um, those who reported experiencing uh, those experiences marginalization, so in terms of percentages and number. And in the third column is the odds ratio, so if you don't have a statistics background, odds ratio is kind of like um, how likely whatever you're looking for is going to happen. So to give an example, for physical violence, um, people who reported experiencing physical violence had 3.94 the odds of um, also reporting uh, attempting suicide. So that's kind of like a good way of hopefully understanding what's kind of going on. Um, but when we controlled for all other marginalization indicators in a multi-indicator model, um, we found that um, most are still significant, but there are a few that weren't. Um, so you can have a look at the table and let you look at it for a bit and hopefully you can let that sink in. Cool, um, so this diagram is kind of showing um, the prevalence of suicide by the number of different marginalization indicators like over a cumulative effect. So on the far left, you can kind of see just what the percentages look like when no one is experiencing any form of marginalization in terms of suicide. Um, but as you can see, once you start experiencing one, two, three, over time it slowly starts to add up and more and more people reporting, thinking about suicide or attempting suicide. So that's quite troubling. So we were also looking to see if any of our psychosocial health issues were related to one another in our study. So we did some tests for correlation and pretty much almost all of them were correlated. So this kind of lends to the idea that there are a syndemic may be happening. If they're all interrelated, they might be interacting with each other and making each other worse within gay and bisexual men. And this is kind of like another table similar to before, but instead of looking at forms of marginalization, we were looking at various psychosocial health issues. Um, so again, uh, most of our results, we found that, again, that whenever someone was reporting a psychosocial health issue, they were more likely to either be thinking about suicide or attempting suicide. Um, and again, when we started controlling for different demographic variables and multiple forms of um, psychosocial health issues. Um, there were not so many that were as significant. Um, so I'll let you kind of like hopefully look at that and you can kind of let it sink in as well. It's quite a lot of things to take in. <laughs> Numbers and percentages. Cool, so like the main 
kind of point that I want to drive home is with this table. It's kind of like similar to the graph before, but looking at uh, different psychosocial and health issues. So what we found is that, again, there was like a cumulative effect happening. So uh, the more psychosocial health or health issues that one experienced, the more likely they, were attempt, they would like to lead to attempt suicide. So like, if you look at those who are troubled by suicide in the last 12 months, if they experienced three or more other different psychosocial health issues, they had 6.9 times the odds of being troubled by suicide. And one of the most kind of alarming or like surprising finds that we found in our study was that those who um, experienced three or more psychosocial or health issues had 16.29 times the odds of attempting suicide. So that's quite a high number, and it's not something you see very often when you do studies like this. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to kind of give you like a summary of all that data I just kind of threw at you, and hopefully this will help sink in. Um, so anti-gay violence and discrimination seem to increase suicide, uh, suicide, suicidal thinking, and suicide attempts in gay and bisexual men, based on what we found. Um, psychosocial and health issues seem to be related to one another. They might be interacting with one another, making each other worse in the population. Um, these issues are related to suicide, in our, we think, in our study. Um, and this hopefully provides support for a syndemic theory or model of suicide and gained by sexual men. And the largest effects can be seen uh, when they tend to accumulate over time. And so, thanks. Uh, <laughs> Just to wrap up, so some conclusions that we drew from conducting our studies that more research and attention needs to be focused on suicide and gain by sexual men. Um, and most of these interventions that need to happen need to consider all these other health issues that may be interacting with another, making another worse, instead of just looking just at suicide alone or just looking at party drugs alone or just anything else just as itself. And last and most importantly, these things may be related to experiences of homophobia or heterosexism. So in order to really combat or to get rid of these health issues that affect our community, we really need to make sure that we uh, combat, combat these oppressive forces that exist in our society to make sure these issues go away. Um, yeah, and that's my presentation. <laughs> <laughs>